Hi, I'm Meredith Boyd. I'm founder of Meredith Boyd Cosmetics here in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for joining me. We're gonna be talking about cosmetology, the final exam, the state board exams, specifically the new changeover from the practical exam going from in-person to online. Whether that's being proctored at your house or going to a testing site and taking your practical exam on a computer blowing my mind. So just want to share the information. Please give me a follow. I'm working on my subscribers now. Like the video. Leave me a comment below. Let me know where you're located. Okay, let's get started. So I've got my cosmetology license right here. I am so proud of it. Oh my gosh. So excited that you're going through this process. Congratulations. No matter where you are in your journey for cosmetology, it takes time, so don't beat yourself up. We're all doing this together. I mean, I'm not a spring chicken, so I would like to say that, you know, we all have goals and aspirations, no matter how old we are. We are young at heart. Over 40 and fabulous, that's what, that's right. So let's get into the thick of things. So let's talk about Georgia primarily um, for just a second. So my practical was in person. It was terrifying. <laughs> There were proctors that would walk around the room um, throughout the test examination time. I mean, it was several hours. I mean, it was, I mean, it was over three and a half hours. It felt like five. Um, I think it was round about five just because you get there early, you gotta wait around, they take your ID, they snap your picture. I mean, it's, it's very intense. So um, it is very, very different in Georgia because they do everything in person versus what's happening now in, oh, well, you gotta bring all your gear. Yeah, meaning all your mannequin, you have to bring your mannequin. I had two mannequins because I have to have a backup mannequin. Um, your kit, um, all of the things for every exercise, you know, whether I think we had like 24 different um, exercises down to the hand that we used. So every implement, product, everything was labeled, new, ready for use. So those of you who are all across the country, things are changing. I don't know. I, I, think it's, I think it's great that they're changing, but at the same time, I do like it being in person because it forces you to really get to the nitty gritty of every single thing that you have to learn. Um, but I'm old school, so I really do like that. Um, I love being in person. I'm a visual learner, so that really does help me understand all the, the ins and outs of every single exercise. So in Georgia, it was in person. The theory test that is on computer, I mean, that's standard, I think, for all the states, um, that you go into a testing site and then you take the written, which is the theory exam via computer. And I think that's 90 minutes long, 110 questions. So um, that's pretty self-explanatory there. So the practical here in Georgia is um, in person. Now, I got an email from one of my subscribers. Thank you so much, it was so good to hear from you. She's in Arizona, and so they're concerned about getting ahead of the game as far as you know, getting insight and taking the practical examination via computer. So that is totally, it blows my mind because you think, you know, I've been learning whether you've been apprenticing at a salon or you've been in a school, and then you turn around and you do it all on the computer. Okay. Let's let's go let's get with the times and do it. So so for Arizona, I've printed out every single bit of information that I could find on the internet. And it's all from the Arizona State Board of Cosmetology. So az.gov. So look, always look up if you're ever wanting to look up someone's um, cosmetology license, just Google Secretary of State and then that state. And then there should be some sort of lookup system for any type of professional licensure. So um, you can go to the cosmetology site and then seek the information for license application. So here it says that the testing update da -da -da, is beginning of May 24th. So I'm assuming that was this past May. PCS, which is Professional Credential Services. So every state has a different company that does the testing. So in Georgia, it's PSI. Um, and then there was another company for the written, I think it's NIC, Nick. 
So, um, N National Interstate Council of State Boards of Cosmetology. I think that's for everything. I think they're kind of like the grand poobah of everything. Um, anyway, so they will begin scheduling and testing practical examinations for cosmetology, aesthetics, and nail technology. So that encompasses all three of those things starting back in May. And um, in April of 2022, PCS, Professional Cred Credential Services, started offering a computer-based test, they call it CBT. So I was like, CB, oh yeah, CBT. Um, for both written theory and practical examinations. Oh my God. The use of CBT examinations will increase testing capacity for candidates. So that's the whole reason that they're going from in-person practical to testing on a computer um, so that they can get more candidates through. All right. Awesome. I'm glad there's so many people going through cosmetology and we all want to be awesome. Um, we want to beautify the world. I love it. Um, Cause you know, we put everything into the world, but it's what you put into it is what matters. So make it beautiful. Okay. So PCS is utilizing um, eight testing centers. And this, this is again, this is for the state of Arizona. So there's eight testing centers. That's good. That's nice. I think Georgia, we only have one, two, three. Um, so eight is awesome. So go to, here's the website, pcshq.com to find the closest one to you. So it's P as in Paul, C as in cat, S as in Sam, H as in ham, Q as in question.com. So also if you have questions, go to that website or go or call 888-822-3272. Um, that is the Arizona Barbering and Cosmetology Board. They're at 480-784-4539. So these folks at PCS can answer your examination questions at pcshq.com. They're gonna have the most up-to-date information about taking this test. Your school, they're gonna be telling the schools what's up. They're gonna be like, they're like the Volturi of all this, you know? So I would go straight to them, straight to the horse's mouth with this. So when you register, it's pretty straightforward, very basic. Um, you'll click on application and candidates, cosmetology and barbering, Arizona, go through all the pull down menus. And then you'll have to upload a two by two passport photo to your account. Um, if you do not upload that, it will delay your approval, right? I mean, who's got a two by two passport photo laying around? I mean, I got my passport photo taken, but I don't have an actual, see what I'm saying? So take a picture, passport style, two by two, edit it, cut it, crop it, and have that ready to go. That way your application does not go into some black hole somewhere never to be seen again in the, in the universe. Um, you'll pay the $177 and that includes your written and your practical. All right, print out your candidate's handbook. Let me repeat that. Print out your candidate's handbook. I love printing everything out, underlining, highlighting it all. They give you everything you need to know about the examination in your handbook. Just print it out. Highlight it up. Thank you later. All right, so fill out the application, yada, yada. Great. Moving on. Um, so in Arizona, I mean, I think it's so cool. You get to take it via computer. That's wild. You don't have to bring all the stuff. I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around that. I love that. But I like it in person too. So I'd like to take it both ways and see how you do. You know, it's like taking the SAT, like with real stuff, <laughs> and then taking, the, taking it um, written. I don't know, it's kind of cool. So moving on. So here's the candidate information bulletin. This is through NIC. That was the National um, Interstate Council of State Boards of Cosmetology. They, they are, they are the ones who put out the candidate information bulletin. You need to print this out. So the written practical examination is 120 minutes. 
Two hours. Lucky ducks. Oh my gosh. Ours was hours upon hours upon hours long. And it was just, and if you go to the bathroom, it's like, that's your time. Well, it is still your time if you go to the bathroom with this one too. But I just think it's, wow. Okay. This is so, this is, this is my boy. So in the state of Tennessee, get a load of this. So I'm doing a lot of research online. My goal is to try to get every single state and do a video on it so that when you're Googling, you find some information because there's hardly any information out there. And I know I was on the struggle bus too, trying to figure out, well, what do I bring? How, what's the size bag do I need to bring in? You know, all the things because you've been through so much you want to do it right. You're at the very end. You can see the finish line. Um, so in Tennessee, get a little of this. You can take it at home, but it's proctored. So what you'll do is you'll have the camera and then you have to scan the room with your laptop, computer, phone, whatever um, camera that you're using. And then that way they'll be like, everything's got to go down to a tissue box. Got to go. Cannot be in sight because you know you could be hiding a camera in there and that could be talking to you here and you can be like figuring out the answers to the questions. Oh my gosh, I mean, I can only imagine what people have attempted, okay? So clean it out, wipe it out. Um, that way you don't waste time the day of your test and you can just get on with it. So, um, so in Tennessee, you can proctor at home via virtual on a computer, that's, that's mind blowing. But let's just say, hey, you're in a noisy apartment, you've got a noisy household, you know, let's say you've got kids running around, um, dogs, pets, you know, all the things, you can go into a site, into a testing center and take the test there. It's much quieter, um, you can really focus. So either way, you know, think about it. See which way is best for you. But remember, if you take it at home, you cannot have anything on, on, on your desk, you cannot have anything that could look like it could talk to another thing and be hidden something and I don't know. It seems like a lot of work to me, but um, if you feel more confident taking it home, do it. If you feel like, nope, I'm not gonna be able to concentrate, go to a testing site. Um, okay, the examination is two hours. The references that you need to take this test is the tried and true Bible, the Milady book, that is the standard cosmetology milady book from miladypro.com. It is a super thick one. I sold mine um, on Poshmark and it was everything that you need to know in both the theory and the practical, everything. So also a very good product is the Pivot Point Fundamentals of Cosmetology. That book is also good. So they have all the same reference points so I went with Milady just because I feel like, you know, it's all the same information. But if you want a supplement, you could definitely use the pivot point, but it's, a, it's very much so the same. Okay, let's talk about the content. What are they gonna be asking you? You're thinking, what is the breakdown? Because while in each single um, exercise at the practical in-person examination, we do it all. We go from haircutting, you know, it's 30 minutes, 20 minutes for the haircut. I used, I used 20 minutes for the haircut and then 10 minutes to cross check everything. But some folks, they just went and just kept on cutting the whole time and, and, and whatnot. So I just wanted to make sure my haircut was down 20 minutes and then I used 10 minutes to cross check so that when that proctor came by, my, all my sections were clean and I didn't have any crazy ridges or, um, areas that I did not get to. So that way I, I felt confident about that. Um, so here it's a little different. So starting with scientific concepts, number one, very important, just like in theory, sanitation, infection control, safety practices, absolutely so important. That is, I feel like the biggest thing, and there's my sanitizer right there. I mean, I have one in every room. I highly encourage it. So I think it is so very important just to standardize as, as a standard so that everything is disinfected, sanitized. I mean, for your client's protection, for your protection, for everybody, just to maintain a super, super sanitized area that is just safe. So that's 20%. 
That is all about recognizing cross-contamination, preventing cross-contamination. The difference between single-use and multi-use tools, y'all, is pretty easy. So it's basic chemistry of products used in cosmetology. If, if you've truly read your Milady books, your Pivot Point books, um, your, your, all of your curriculum, it's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, that seems so simple. But yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So all the products, ingredients, physical interactions with chemicals, chemical reactions, which is an overexposure, uh, chemical burn, the basics. So that's 20%. Okay, okay, that's good. Yes, yes, easy. So second part is 45%, hair care and services. So that encompasses the client consultation, analysis and documentation of hair care services. So we're talking about evaluation the condition of the client scalp, discussing and recognize the conditions that would prohibit a service, the areas of services and products that you're gonna use for that client's service that day, uh, recognize and, the, and interpret the results of the preliminary tests, predisposition, strand tests. So going through those step-by-step, step, establish and maintain client records, service history, um, client card, that sort of thing. Uh, what else we got? Tools used in hair care services, the equipment, uh, the chair, the workstation, a lot of the ergonomics with that, common sense, um, implements, razors, shears, combs, brushes, supplies, materials, towels, drape, neck strips. Know your order. Is it neck strip, drape, or towel? And then your drape? Depends. If it's a chemical service, you're going to double drape. If it's the hair cutting, it's a single drape. Makes sense. So make sure you remember what goes with what. Electrical tools, irons, blow dryers, clippers, uh, proper disinfection procedures. Again, going back to the scientific concepts, it's always gonna come back. You're gonna get several questions that you're gonna go, I think I just answered that. Babe, they're gonna to wanna to make sure that you know how to, how to first cleanse the area, get rid of dirt, debris, disinfect, and then you know clean, sanitize, the whole, all, all the things, okay? So hair care, knowledge and principles of shampooing and conditioning, um, scalp massage, uh, the treatments for scalp, the knowledge of draping, chemical, shampoo, and cutting, right? We just talked about that. Hair design, all the safety, again, safety, principles and procedures of hair cutting and shaping, wet styling, thermal styling, natural hair styling, as well as braiding. Um, knowledge and principles of hair enhancements, facial shape, physical structure, um, you may get questions about what kind of haircut uh, or hairstyle would flatter a heart-shaped face or oval face. Um, so know those things as far as what would be recommended for facial shapes. Uh, chemical services, hair coloring, including corrective color, hair lightening, foiling. Remember, this is all still for that 45%, okay? Uh, all the chemicals chemical services, uh, relaxing, hydroxide, the Theo, the keratin treatments, chemical waving, texturizing with that are alkaline, acid, non-Theo, and keratin. That, that's a big, big, big section. Um, but if you're very familiar and if you've been reading, you're good. So domain number three, 15%. Skincare and services. To me, this is, this is really, um, very good information. I mean, it's all great information, but I think it's very straightforward. Evaluate the condition of the client's skin, the skin type, the skin condition. Identify any problem areas, disorders, diseases, um, because you may have to stop the service and you know acknowledge with the client that they need to seek um, a doctor's care uh, because you can't move forward with the service because you may injure them, and that's not that's not okay. You put you put yourself at risk, and then you put your client at risk. So just don't even don't even try it. Um, no matter how much they're begging to get it done. So it's best to, to take, the, to take that, that route. Um, maintain your client records, again, tools for the services, equipment, supplies, your chairs, your tweezers, brushes, extractors, all of the creams, masks, towels, 
um, body hair drapes and proper disinfection procedures yet again. Let's see what else we got. Uh, recognize the safe practices for tools, ergonomics, supplies, equipment, implements, facial care services, cleansing, steaming, exfoliation, extraction, massage, all the manipulation techniques. That's very important. You'll have to know all of those. They're pretty straightforward. Hair removal, tweezing, uh, debilitories, hard waxes, soft wax, makeup application, and electrical equipment. It's super important to understand if someone has um, seizures, that if you have a bright light, you know, in, in their eyes, or if you're, you know, using some of this equipment, it could trigger a potential seizure. So if they have epilepsy, things like that, you want to be very, very, um, you want to know this stuff up front uh, so that you don't injure your clients. So, uh, 20%, this is the last part. Oh my God. <laughs> 20% is nail care and services. So you guys, I just, I want to take this test so bad. Um, the client consultation analysis and documentation for nail care service, nail, nah, nah, nail care services. I'm so excited about it. Let's talk about some disorders and diseases, shall we? So we're talking about on the hands and the feet, uh, just determine the services and products, uh, the tools that you will be using and the purpose as well as in for infection control procedures, equipment, implement supplies, all the towels, creams, and polish, proper disinfection procedures, and you understand and recognize safe practices for these tools, um, and that you know how to apply the procedures for application, maintenance, and removal of nail enhancements, with the, which would be nail tips and acrylics. In person, when we have the, the practical examination in person, we actually have to put on a, an acrylic nail by hand using the molymer and the polymer. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's, just, it's just how it is. All right, so let's talk about a, some examples of what it's like to go through the cosmetology written practical examination. So here are some sample questions that are provided by NIC so that you guys can see what it's like. Okay, so humor me for a moment. The first step prior to disinfecting implements is to A, rinse thoroughly with hot water, B, remove all hair and visible debris, C, completely immerse in sanitizing solution, or D, expose to UV light for 15 minutes. The answer is B, remove all hair and visible debris. That's a sample question on the practical written examination. Right? It's pretty simple. So I, th I think you got this. Okay, let's do another one. The application of facial makeup will become unsafe when which of the following occurs? A, product is transferred to a palette. B, fingers are used to transfer product to a palette. C, hand is used to brace during application. D, fingers are used for product application. It's B, fingers are used to transfer product to a palette. So, again, pretty common sense here, okay? Are you with me? Let's do another one, okay. During the client consultation for a manicure, the practitioner determines the client has brutal nails. Which of the following treatments is recommended for this condition? A, apply a clear top coat. Apply a clear top coat. B, perform a paraffin treatment. C, conditioning oil manicure. D, buff with a three-way buffer. It's C, conditioning oil manicure. Think about this. I mean, it's, I'm excited. All right, so they even have, so those were all multiple choice. You get to choose. Now, there's pictures, there's illustrations. So there's gonna be some questions with actual graphics of pictures of implements and tools. So it's good to be familiar with all of this, obviously, because you've been using this uh, to get all your hours in. So it'll ask, please select images of multi-use items. So a multi-use item would be something you can disinfect, clean, remove debris, disinfect, sanitize, and use again on your client. However, things like a buffer brush, a wooden stick, um, those types of things, oh, you gotta toss that, babe. So, if it's like a, an, 
a cuticle pusher, cuticle nipper, um, those types of things. You would clean, disinfect, sanitize. Um, so those are, be familiar with those tools. And then select the finger hole in the image below. Oh, it's right there. So um, I believe it's a little grainy on this photo. That's talking, I think, a finger grip. Um, because it, it actually you can size the inside of a uh, shear to fit your actual fingers. So super simple. I think if you've been diligent about reading all of your notes, keeping informed with like staying staying in the groove of everything from chapter to chapter, you've got this. I have no doubt that you're going to leave there and you will pass. Um, speaking of the results, from what I gathered, and this is from what I learned in Arizona, they will email you the results. So unlike Georgia, they in Georgia, they will hand you a paper. You passed or you freaking fail. So um, you know immediately because the, the, the person in the testing site is like, congratulations, or you know, um, that was terrifying to see. I was just like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? So um, they email you with the results. So you can move on with your day, have a Cosmo and enjoy. So I think we're headed in a great direction. Again, it, if it's encouraging more uh, individuals to test and we can get the testing done, by all means, it's good. Um, what do you think? What are, you, what are your thoughts about taking the practical examination via computer in a written format? Let me know your thoughts. I am so just mind blown over this shift and this change. Now, every state is different. For instance, in the state of Pennsylvania, did you know that they take, they take a, a written theory exam, but there's no practical examination? I know, makes you wanna move. Um, so every state is different, but you've gotta prove your skills in, with your client, with you and to yourself. I think that's the biggest thing too. So I am awfully excited for you and your journey. So please keep me posted. I cannot wait to give you more updates as I get them and feel free to comment below. I cannot wait to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe. Please give me a follow, like, give me a comment. It would mean so much to me and I look forward to doing more videos soon. Good luck.